believe all the victims were slashed to death. With a knife? No, it sounds crazy, but it looks like they were killed with a giant pair of scissors. The giant scissors once again search for prey. A trail of terror stretches across Europe, from Norway to England. There it is, the Barrow's Mansion. We have to go there and look around, or we'll never solve the mystery of scissor nets. Got to be joking. It's way too dangerous. As long as he's alive, we're not safe anywhere, guys. One after another, <gasps> the horrifying murders continue. <gasps> We'll make it through this game of murder alive. Clock Tower. Hey everybody, welcome to Clock Tower. Now I've sat and thought a little long and hard if this is a game I want to play because this game here, back when I was a kid, me and my buddies, we went to the movie store. I was trying to be cool, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going I'm to pick this game, you know, because I'm cool. And uh, we put it in, we were in this basement, you know, this unfinished basement at the time, you know, with the TV, all the lights were off, we were just sitting in the room, you could see all the uh, decorations for Christmas and stuff through uh, through the walls all the way to the, uh, to the walkout. And... We had no idea what we were playing until the uh, scissor man came in and, you know, we were like, we gotta get the fuck out of this basement. So we fucking pushed each other, we were racing up the stairs, and we left everything on downstairs. And then, you know, we are like, oh shit, we gotta go down there and turn that shit off. So we, we went down there with uh, flashlights and stuff, no unfinished, there wasn't any uh, electricity down there. And uh, ever since then, I've been nervous to play this game. So I have played around with it a little bit. Um, I haven't gotten to the castle before. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to hit a new game here. Actually, I did get one ending, which I will show. I'm going to show you right now. I got ending E for Helen. And this is if you send the statue to um, the library instead of the uh, old butler. And then you go to the old butlers, and then you won't find the statue. And then you just get this ending here. So might as well get one out of the way while we're at it. And now, without knowing the whereabouts of the statue, it was over. There was no way for us to escape from Scissor Man. Jennifer? Jennifer? Jennifer, are you asleep already? <gasps> Jennifer! 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 Hold on! Oh, fuck. Alright, so I'm gonna start a new game here. What's the pamphlet look like? Alright, Clock Tower Story. Actually, let's read this shit because, uh, you know. Oh, I got hint one. Okay, the main character is determined by the number of times Harris. Is spoken in the corridor during the prologue. If he is spoken to two or more times, then Jennifer becomes the main character. Um, how many number of times Harris is spoken to in the corridor during the prologue? So I talked. Oh shit! I kind of want to play as Jennifer. Cause isn't Jennifer from the first one? Okay, okay, That's, I want to do that one. Okay, if Helen is a protagonist in the last scenario, some something must be dropped down the shaft when deciding which of the three shafts is correct. Oh, all right. In the mountains of <coughs> Romstaren, Norway stands, or stands the Barrows family mansion. This mansion had a large clock tower. Now, I have played the Super Nintendo, and I haven't really sat down and, you know, played through it. Uh, even that game is creepy as shit for being a Super Nintendo game. 
but uh, by which the locals tended their flocks in the surrounding fields. The local people called the mansion the Clock Tower. In 1986, the mistress of the Barrows Mansion gave birth to twins. From the day they were born, however, it was obvious the twins were not normal and were evil. They were demons. The twins were given the names Bobby and Dan, who were later to become the murderous scissor men. Men, not man. In 1995, a young girl from the Granic Orphanage, whose parents died when she was quite small, was lured into the Barrows Mansion, where she was attacked by a monster wielding a giant pair of scissors, which we will too. That monster was the grown-up Bobby. She managed to escape the terrible horrors, destroy the monster, and flee the mansion. Depending on what ending you get. <laughs> For the next year, all of, all of Norway was caught up with the sensationalized Scissorman murderer. Although Jennifer thought he was dead, Scissorman has reappeared. I don't know what that is. Alright. So you see um, Jennifer and Helen. I want to play as Jennifer, but I want to do everything I did as Helen. Anyway. There's uh, f 10 endings, you know, Helen you can play through all the way to the end, I guess, and Jennifer you can play all the way in, each have 5 endings. A is good, B is not so good, C, D, and E could be either or. So, uh, we're just going to hit new game, and... Oh, fuck, here we go. Okay. Prologue. Samuel Barton. Samuel Barton is a therapist now this should take over or yeah right after the last game I believe I don't know what the red line is but looks cool as shit anyway Professor Barton Professor Barton what on earth are you doing professor you mustn't hypnotize her like this She's not ready to remember the murders yet. Helen, well, I won't either. Clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me. For me. <laughs> I must know the truth of what happened. She can't take any more of this today, Professor. I'm taking her home. All right. But remember one thing, Helen. You may be her guardian. But you were my bitch. No. <laughs> yes, professor. Yes, doctor. <laughs> All right, so we start as Professor Barton here. So we have to uh, examine everything. And uh, depending on what you examine and what you don't examine, it sets you up for the ending that you're going to get, who you talk to, who you don't talk to, who you find dead or don't find dead. So um, I know how to get through the first scenario pretty quick. Um, that will get us to um, not that bad ending I showed in the beginning. So uh, we are going to hit these scissors here. It's really the most interesting. It is a point and click game, which makes uh, the fear level even worse. They were a replica by the scissors used by the murderer. Fuck, something just fell over in the sink and scared the shit out of me. In the clock tower case. These are like the weapon he used to slash up his victims. So hopefully that's not a real pair of scissors, or if it's just like a, you know, a styrofoam dealio. Hmm, there was a faint smell of ammonia. Can we look at it again? Okay, so it didn't change the dialogue, so we only need to click on that once. And we can't click on the scissors again, so we have to hit everything in here. You get your items up here, cursor, there'll be keys and all that stuff, so. Um, let's look at this uh, bed here. The Clock Tower Murders. The mass murder of over 10 victims in this case. How intriguing. So there's a lot of shit that you could find. I mean, I can, I'm can. i thinking about just playing it to grab the key and get out. But I might, uh, I don't know where all the safe spots are. I know you can use a safe spot here and there. <clears throat> Alright, so I think we're done with this room. He'll tell you if, if he needs to uh, look at anything else before he leaves. my laboratory. Lately I've been doing mostly criminal psychology research. Hmm, the staff is still here. 
Alright, so well, the statue is very, very important. We will look at it now. The statue, it is cold. One of the items found at the scene of the clock tower murders. It would be a good idea to get an expert opinion on this. Okay, so we're done with that one. So we have to scroll through if I double click on something that we already read, so. Professor, Helen left a few minutes ago and she looked uh, really angry. Hmm. Let's the tome to fucking do it as I do as I say. You know, Helen and Jennifer are really beginning to look like sisters, aren't they? I guess that's what happens when you live together. One mustn't let their personal feelings get in the way. Jennifer is nothing more than another research subject. Ah, uh, yes, yes, you're right. I wish I had a cute kid sister, a cute kid brother. Would be okay, too. What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> so there's a... Uh, <clears throat> the Scissor Man's mask. Cool. Helen's desk. Scissor Man's rubber mask. It's kind, a kind sold in cheap novelty shops and seems to be fairly popular. People certainly buy stupid things. Harris's desk. Clipped out and articles of the clock tower story are scattered about. It seems Harris has gone somewhere. But where? Is it Harris? Alright. Now let's talk to this dude. Danny, professor, a newspaper reporter is here. Did you have an in appointment for an interview? It's about the clock tower murders, isn't it? Huh, I guess they want to say, sensationalize this scissor man who really doesn't exist. Even exist. Scissor man, it'd be cool if he were real. Huh? Or just a joke. Yeah, until fucking scissor man actually comes chasing you. You shouldn't keep the reporter waiting too long. Alright, so we should be able to leave now. If we didn't finish all the dialogue, you would say, I still have something to do in here. Nah. So we're going to talk to this guy. Harris. Okay. Oh, Professor. So if we talk to him a bunch of times, then we'll get Jennifer. And that's what I want. A newspaper reporter is looking for you on the first floor. Because if you do, if you do uh, Jennifer, then we should be able to see more, more of the thing. Or of the, uh, oh, you know what, I don't remember. We're, we're, we're just going to play it and, and figure it out. She's already gone home. Was there something you wanted to see her about? Um, no. He's always so gloomy. He's top-notch, though, that's for sure. But then, um, is Jennifer, she's already gone home. Was there something you needed, wanted to see her about? Um, no. She's just really hot. She's, okay, he's always so gloomy. He's top notch, though, that's for sure. But then, okay, so I talked to Harris a bunch. Uh, I don't think we can go anywhere else besides the people who were at the, uh, oh, I, that's, I just went back to my office. <laughs> Alright, let's get the fuck out of here. Alright. And just for you guys, I'm going to examine everything as much as I can. I'm still going to work on just getting in and out because I don't want to be stuck in stuck in this place with this scissor man any longer than anyone else. All right, floor one. Professor, I am the one who called you from the Oslo Weekly News. My name is Nolan Campbell, and this is Tim, my cameraman. It's a pleasure. I'm a bit busy. Please keep it brief. 
Alright. Then I'll get right to the point. Have you been able to figure out who the murderer is? I can't say anything for sure yet because the victim's testimony lacks credibility. Oh, do you mean the victim that's testifying? That'd be Jennifer Simpson, wouldn't it? Yes, but what about her? Oh, nothing really. It's just that we saw her leaving a few minutes ago. And since we'd run into her, we asked for her for an interview, but she refused. You just said her testimony lacked credibility. I know what you're going to say. That monster she was talking about, the scissorman, and whether he really exists or not. That's it. That's right. That is what our readers want to know. Because the existence of the scissor man has become a symbol of terror among the youth. Youngsters. Yes, and that's because trashy gossip magazines like you have sensationalized the whole thing. So, booyah. Ouch, that hurts. Not much I can say to that, is there? Well, let's start from the conclusion. It's fact that there was a murderer who used a giant pair of scissors as his weapon. Murder weapon. But that doesn't make him into an immortal monster. We're just dealing with some odd screwball. But what about what she said? She was scared. She thought she saw something. Oh, I see, but... Okay, that's it. Interview's over. You fucking said, okay, but we're done. Is there something... There, mu there is something I must be attending to. Ah, well, okay, yeah, I understand. Thank you very much. Sorry I couldn't be as much help to you as you had hoped. I have to get back to the lab. I'm expecting another survivor of the clock tower murders. He is supposed to be a young boy about 10 years old. Oof. Now, I don't know if any of you played the, SC, the Super Nintendo version, but if this takes place right after that, then we got ourselves a surprise. Alright, he's on the second floor. Come on, run, you fucker. There we go. Oh, so, a lot of this is setting up... Um, oh, shit, okay, okay. Now, this is another important thing. You gotta look at the mask, then we got to... Uh, oh, that's right, I still need to get an expert opinion on the statue. Oh, that's right, okay. So, we need to tell this dude who we want to have look at it. And I know that uh, if we tell him to give it to Rick, which is the old butler for the, for the the at the Battle's Castle, then we'll go to his house. And if we don't, then we get stuck in the library. And I have... And the library, I don't really understand because I... One time, I played up to that point. I was like, I've never seen this before. And fucking... I, I, I'd rather do the house. Is there something I can do for you? Okay, so I was talking and hear what the fuck he was talking about. Named Rick. Okay, I'll show it to him first to see if he knows. Alright, so Rick or Sullivan, which is the librarian guy. I'm pretty sure he lives in the suburbs. I could ask Harris to show it to him. Uh, yes. All right, I'll ask Harris to show it to Rick. Okay, if I said no, then he would show it to Sullivan at the library. Would you take the statue and show it to a man named Rick? Is that the statue that was at the scene of the crime or murders? Yes, it is. Would you ask him if he knows anything about it? Yes, I'll go and ask him on his way home. This evening. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay, that's that. 
I should probably go into the therapy room. Alright, so now we're going to be going to Rick, Rick's house and not the library. Which I'll play the library another time. So you can see the, the two different scenarios for, for uh, scenario two. Thank you very much for coming. How do you do? I am an instructor at the Granite Orphanage. I am Edward's guardian. Edward, I thought he completely lost his memory. From the shock. Does he remember his name? No, I call him Edward because not having a name to go by makes things very difficult. That's right, you fucking oof. Now, since this is, this is our first day, will you answer uh, some simple questions for me? Okay, Edward. Now, I want you to honestly tell me everything you remember from the clock tower. About what happened. Come on. But what happened? Okay. Er, yes. He knows everything. Alright. Well, then let's, great. then let's get started. Which we don't get to see what happens behind the closed doors. And that was the prologue. And we are going to... I'm going to save real quick. And then uh, I think I'm going to end the video right here. Because... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Because uh, once we get started into the nitty gritty. Then... This is just going to be long. Oh, oh, okay, hold on. Helen isn't home yet. I think I will go for go out for a little while. So she's going to go out. So now we're Jennifer. So uh, we need to go through the town and figure out um, who to, who we're going to talk to. And uh, I'll get that going that in the next episode. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, this, this game, I'm really nervous to play it. So we'll see what happens. But uh, thanks for watching. See ya.